So again, hello everybody. Good to see you. Uh, let's start like we normally do, short period of bell meditation. So wherever you are behind your avatar, please get into a nice meditation posture. Remember, you get distracted. Just gently remind yourself, go back to listening to the sound of the bell. The idea of a short bell meditation is to get your focus going, to get your concentration going, strangely enough, uh, which is what we're going to talk about today. So, practice some deep listening. Okay? So, I'll give you a moment, get into nice meditation posture. We'll begin at the sound of the bell. I go for refuge to the Buddha, the teacher. I go for refuge to the Dhamma, the teaching. I go for refuge to the Sangha, the taught. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dhamma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I have taken refuge in the Buddha. I have taken refuge in the Dhamma. I have taken refuge in the Sangha. Three pure precepts. Cease to do harm. Do only good. Do good for others. Bodhisattva vow. However innumerable all beings are, I vow to lead them all. However inexhaustible my delusions are, I vow to extinguish them all. However immeasurable the Dharma teachings are, I vow to master them all. However endless the Buddha's way is, I vow to follow it completely. Swaha.
So once again, greetings everybody. Monday, Deer Park, Buddha Center. What is it? December 9th. So we're getting closer and closer to Christmas. Uh, so we're going to talk more about the Eightfold Path today. <coughs> Excuse me. And today we're going to talk about concentration. You might have all have seen it as focus. Oh yes, hi, Koan and Marie. Glad you joined us. So again, we're going to talk about uh, appropriate or right concentration, if you prefer. Sometimes you see it as focus. Uh, it can be either way in the Eightfold Path. Uh, just a quick thing, Eightfold Path. Uh, right view, right intent, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right mindfulness, right effort, and right concentration. And today, concentration. <clears throat> so... Concentration, again, along with mindfulness and effort, th these are aspects of the Eightfold Path that lead us to a meditative body-mind, both on and off the cushion. Effort, mindfulness, and concentration are sometimes known as the path to insight, because it allows you, right, to meditate, to put the effort, to concentrate, and actually learn more about yourself and get that insight. Now, whether it is called concentration or focus, it does begin in a Buddhist practice as a meditation practice. And particularly when you think about mindfulness meditation, which is just everywhere these days, because that's one of the big secular meditation practices. Uh, much instruction, meditation instruction that is, is given about ways to maintain concentration during uh, meditation sessions. Uh, some will say, focus on a candle flame. That's actually very good, works really well. Uh, the sound of a ching bell, which we do here before every session, again, can work really well. Uh, or, of course, breathing. That's the biggie, right? Watch your breath. Uh, so any of these can be great objects of focus, especially when we're beginning a meditation practice. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, concentration is important in meditation, but concentration must also be actively practiced when we're off the cushion. Because the things we learn on the cushion, we're supposed to, you know, get up, walk away, and actually use them, right? Once we're out of the, the sangha, if you will, or out of the temple. A while back, um, I went to uh, what's called a mini retreat. It's a two-day retreat that they have sometimes here at a place called the Mid-America Buddhist Association, or as we like to call it, MABA. Um, it's, there was a teaching there during that particular retreat on mindfulness meditation. Now, it's well known that while in meditation, the body-mind can be distracted by feelings and thoughts and sounds, which is why I remind you guys during meditation, you get off track, you get distracted, you just gently bring your attention, your focus back. So we know we can be distracted. Heck, we get distracted whether we're in meditation or not. That doesn't really matter. Well, at this particular retreat, uh, they taught us a Durrani and they handed out a, a nice paper for us that will help us to maintain our concentration by refocusing on our breathing when we would uh, lose concentration, right? Lose that focus. Now, I will let you know at the end, I do have these on a note card that I, I'd like to give you. Uh, but here's the one that they gave out at the retreat. So what I'd like you to do is just take a moment. Think about meditation. You don't have to get into a meditation posture. Maybe just close your eyes or just... Get your breathing under control. Just take a moment. And then listen to this. So again, this is focusing on breath. It's known as the Anapanasati practice. Here we go. As you sit, notice the breath. Whenever distracted by feelings, thoughts, or sounds, say, feeling, 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 return to breath. Thinking, 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 return to breath. Sound, 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 return to breath. For any method which helps keep the mind focused and brings it back gently when it strays. So, very simple, right? If, you, if, if you're on that feeling thing, and I kind of wish they would have used the word emotions, because it's not really the, more the physical feeling that we're thinking about here, it's the emotional feelings, 
right? So maybe it says emotions, 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 return to breath. So if you got those emotions flooding your mind, you just say it three times, return to breath. Same with thinking or with sounds that may intrude. So whenever distracted by feelings, thinking, or sounds, uh, we've got to return to our breath, and we, but we need to do it gently. We don't want to um, get angry with ourselves about it. We don't want to get uh, aggravated, right? We just want to say, hey, you know, just kind of go gently back to it. And doing this gradually, it trains the body-mind to maintain better focus, especially on the cushion, right? Because that's where we're beginning with this. But let's be honest. If you've tried this, you've probably already got this figured out. Watching the breath is not as easy as it sounds. Because we as human beings, we have this tendency to control. Right? As soon as we try to watch the breath, we start trying to control the breath. So control then starts to override watching. And this happens a lot, especially with early meditators. Now, with this kind of Durrani, though, and some maybe creative redescription of this Durrani, we can guide ourselves to deeper levels of concentration when we're off the cushion. And that's where we've got to be honest about it. We spend a lot more of our time as human beings than we do on the cushion. With experience, a meditator learns to set aside emotions and thoughts and sounds in order to achieve a meditative state of being while we're on the cushion. However, some practitioners find it really difficult to practice that same level of concentration in other aspects of their moment-to-moment -moment lives. There are practitioners that when they're on the cushion, their concentration and focus is incredible. It is nigh impossible to break through. No phenomenon messes with their meditative mojo. They maintain that meditative state no matter the external influences or even seems the internal ones. But off the cushion, their mind kind of wanders ceaselessly from one thought to another, from one task to another. Concentration or focus, if you prefer, isn't appropriate only during meditation, we've got to make it a factor in all aspects of our existence, all aspects of our life. Let's do be clear though. In the beginning, meditating on the cushion, that's where you're going to really work on your focus and really get that focus developing. And even when you get that focus nicely developed on the cushion, there is still a good chance that off the cushion you're going to revert. You know, you're going to revert to that mind wandering around and jumping from task to task. So that's our next focus, right? That's our next practice, if you will. So again, gradual, right? From the cushion to off the cushion is just as gradual as any other practice in Buddhism. We know in moment-to-moment -moment living, there's a whole lot of different tasks that need to be done, especially at this time of year. And there's also things that we just want to do. I think maybe it's something we enjoy doing. But like in meditation, feelings and thoughts and sounds can distract us from the task or even from something that we're just doing because we enjoy it. But only if we let them. They're just phenomena. Right, physical sensations or emotional arisings, they can be distracting, but they're only temporary phenomena, so we can choose not to let them distract us. Thinking about other projects, about home, about what you'd rather be doing, anything but what you need to be doing is distracting. The sounds of fire engines, the dog whining, the television on in the other room, these things can be distracting. It is not the phenomena that are distracting, though. It is the body-mind letting them in, letting them be distracted, not bringing the body-mind gently back to the task at hand. So like in meditation, any distracting feelings, thoughts, and sounds, we have to learn to allow them to fall away so we can bring the body-mind back to that state of concentration, that state of focus that we would prefer to be in.
So I had to play around with the Durrani. That Durrani was directed, the, the first one I talked about was directed toward on the cushion. And I think we need a Durrani for off the cushion. And I also have this included in the note card. So I just did a creative redescription of the mindfulness Durrani to give it a little more value off the cushion. And it's actually a simple change. It says, be mindful of the task. Whenever distracted by feelings, thoughts, or sounds, say, feeling, 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 return to the task. Thinking, 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 return to the task. Sound, 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 return to the task. Or any method proven to keep the mind focused and bring it back gently when it strays. So instead of breath, it's just task. Any task can be a meditative experience. I talk about this all the time. I like to use washing dishes. That's my favorite example to use. Uh, they can be a meditative experience if you apply appropriate effort and mindfulness and concentration while you're doing it. Be mindful of why the task is important. Because you'd rather eat off a clean dish than a dirty one. right? Uh, when you notice a twinge in your back from sitting in the office chair for so long, stand up, stretch, you know, do a nice gentle stretch, maybe even take a couple of steps around your desk if you can, but then gently return your attention to the task. Anxious or agitated because there's something you'd rather be doing or because the task is difficult? Let the emotions fall away and gently return to your task. You think about the weekend, what to make for dinner tonight, how great the new Frozen movie is going to be, or any of the other thoughts not related to the task at hand. Well, return your concentration gently to the task. The thought of emails you haven't checked, the sound of the phone ringing, the kids playing right outside the window, gossiping at a nearby desk can all be distractions unless you gently return to the task. Like you gently return to watching breath, you gently return to the task. But why stress gently? Well, there is no need to be forceful to yourself. There's no need to be rude. Because you should be returning to something that you want to do. You want to be able to focus better. You want that better concentration. You want to achieve a nice meditative state so you gain that insight that you'd like to get. So you say things like feeling, 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 or thinking, 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 sound, sound, sound as an intentional way to remind yourself to set aside any body-mind activity that is not necessary to complete the task at hand. Appropriate concentration isn't only for meditation. This contemporary world that we deal with on a daily basis is packed with distractions that the Buddha could have never considered, never in his wildest imagining. So no matter the time or culture, there is value in the practice of appropriate concentration or focus. Whatever the task is that needs to be done, on the cushion or off the cushion, it deserves total concentration and focus so that it is done well.